Hello friends! I would like to share some information that I gathered and also my own experience about pros and cons of having a pet pigeon. Before I got Toby, I was doing my research online, but I couldn't find much information. Pigeon coops? Yes, you got it. But a pet pigeon? Not really. I don't know, maybe people don't really see them as pets. Let's start with that. Is it legal to have a pet pigeon? And the short answer for that would be yes for fancy pigeons and yes for the most places. I am from Russia. Not that you can tell by my perfect English accent. Back home there are no strict regulations about pets. So to my knowledge you can have a pet bear if you want. And as long as you keep it in satisfactory conditions, you feed it all that, it doesn't bother your neighbors, you're fine. But in Canada, rules are more strict. Before doing anything illegal, I did contact local services and it turned out that even in Toronto, it is not illegal to have a pet pigeon. So people who question the legality of my decision, yeah, and if you know regulations for your own region, it never hurts to double check, you know? Since it's out of the way, let's start with the cons list. Oh my god, they're messy. They're not most delicate eaters. They tend to walk around on the plate and like pick the best seats that they like and then toss everything out of the plate. So yeah, it's messy. And they're also clumsy. So if you put that like, nice dish of water there, they can step on it and flip it. So be careful about that. Pigeons also like to, I, I, I don't know what the word would be, not spit necessarily. But like when Toby would eat seeds and a small grain would get stuck in her throat so she would shake her head to get rid of it and you know like saliva goes everywhere or when she would drink some water and would have a little drop on her beak she would also shake it off. Yeah, if you have a mirror or a glass in a close proximity to the pigeon it will never look presentable. Pigeons also molt a lot. At least that statement is true for female pigeons that are laying eggs. Once a month your apartment will look like you pretty much killed the bird and plucked its feathers. Some people say that pigeons mold even more than parrots. I had a parakeet when I was like six years old and it died. So I don't remember much about have like what's it like to have a pet parrot except for the trauma of losing a pet. Actually no I don't remember much of it because I mean I was six. I was dumb. But let's continue to talk about good stuff. Pigeons produce a special powder to keep their feathers clean and waterproof. And because they're like a medium-sized bird, they produce a lot of it. It will look like someone has a dander problem, but you know, just tell people it's not you, it's a bird. You can be allergic to birds. Similar to how people can have or may develop allergic reaction to cats. Well, I mean, not specifically cats, but the proteins contained in their uh, saliva, dander, and urine, people can have or may develop allergic reaction to birds. And it doesn't help when your birds is like, spreading excessive amounts of feathers and dander everywhere around the apartment. There are not too many stores that specialize in pigeon supplies and if you'll find one they sell stuff for what's going on? What? Are you mad at me? Do I suck? And if you'll find one they usually sell stuff for pigeon coops which means big amounts. Technically, you can buy a pigeon mix from a pet store or let's say a wild bird mix from a grocery store, but their mixes have like very poor seed variety or a poor quality of the poor seed variety. So it's really worth to do your research and find specialized stores. Besides, like you're gonna find their mixes specifically made for pigeons. And not only that, they also will be selling pigeon pellets, which will have all sorts of nutrients as well as probiotics, which is a good thing. Oh, and also grit is very important for pigeon digestion. They use like a special kind. You're not gonna find it at a pet store. That's like 100%. Only in specialized pigeon supplies. It's a hassle, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have a nice... It's worth it. You're gonna have a pet, I mean, loyal pet 
with you who's not gonna let you record videos you will need to find an avian vet the bills will hurt your wallet big time funny enough you can get a pigeon for somewhere between 20 to 200 dollars why what is it you're going okay so one might think that the vet visit is gonna cost way less for cheap pigeon in comparison to an expensive parrot. No, my friend, every year or better half a year, you will need to take your bird for the overall wellness check, where they take the poop and blood for all sort of stuff, including fungus. That visit costed me like two expensive Madonna pigeons. One pigeon vet check or two Madonna pigeons. You understand the gravity, right? They need your attention and your company and that is even more true if you have only one bird. Yes, you can have only one bird. That is true if you're working like 24 seven from home. Don't have any friends. Pigeons are extremely social animals. They just want to be around you. They want your company in general. If you want to buy a bird and just forget about it, buy a betta fish or like a cat. Not that I don't think you don't need to take care of the cat or a betta fish. I mean, getting any pet, you're assuming a certain level of responsibility, like to feed it, take care of it. There are some animals that will be less maintenance and more independent, I guess, and will fit your lifestyle better. I think I covered the biggest cons that I can think of. For now, let's just get it end up there. That means we can move to pros. They need your attention and your company, and that is even more true if you have only one bird. I know I just said it like a five seconds ago in the cons list, but you know what? I love it. Before I got Toby, I was doing my research thoroughly. The most important criteria for me was the bird to be with me. I mean, it kind of sounds selfish in a way. Yeah, I want my bird to be with me. But on the other hand, it's like, you know, when people get a dog, they're also looking for a companion. Nah, still sounds selfish. Anyway, Toby is always with me. Besides the time when she's sleeping, she has her little spot that she prefers that is not in the bedroom. When I go out to get the brochure or something like that, she's not with me because we're still working on a harness training. When Toby is not on her eggs, she's always with me. Literally always with me. Speaking of training, you can train pigeons. Do you know the dude called Boris Frederick Skinner, I think I butchered his name completely. Positive and negative reinforcement. When you train your dog to do the trick and the dog does exactly what you want, uh, you reinforce its behavior with a treat. If you're doing that or you know about that, that means that you're literally using the method that was described by Skinner in his book. And guess what? In order to do his research, he used pigeons. And he was training them all sorts of tricks because I couldn't get a permission to show you the little clip from Skinner research actually. I'm just gonna give you the link down below. You guys should check it out. It's pretty awesome. So yes, you can train pigeons. But with that being said, just like with dogs, some breeds are more susceptible for training than others. For example, German Shepherd would be a little bit easier to train than, uh, I don't know, Chihuahua. For pigeons, it will be easier to train homing pigeon than Moderna. <laughs> Montana will train you. Pigeons are definitely, if not the quietest, but one of the quietest pet birds that you can have. They don't need to vocalize just because, like parakeets, for example, that are quiet when they sleep. Pigeons do make sounds like... It's very quiet and you're not gonna hear it much. So if you live in an apartment with thin walls, your neighbors will never know you have a pet bird. When pigeons bite, they pitch, which doesn't really hurt. Pigeons' beak is very weak. It meant to pick seeds from the ground or small sprouts. Not chew through stuff, bite through stuff. Toby even has a hard time picking up that tiny little piece of cardboard that just refuses to be ripped off. Don't get me wrong, she will bite if she feels in danger, but you're not gonna end up bleeding or in need of stitches or something like that. Speaking of weak beak, pigeons don't destroy stuff. I remember I ran into an article where, uh, I don't remember the person's name, but somebody uh, compared parrots with toddlers with pliers, because that's what parrots do, they destroy stuff. And I mean, no blame for them. This is part of their nature. This is how they maintain their beak in a good shape, right? So that's just what they do. If you let your parrot fly around and stretch a little bit around the apartment and you lost sight of it and it became suspicious like why? It's probably chewing through wires or shredding that beautiful collection of books that you had 
before. Pigeons don't chew through stuff. That's not part of their nature. And this is one of the main reasons why Toby lives without cage and she's just free flying around the apartment whatever she wants to. Pigeons are relatively hardy birds. You know how some animals are prone to have certain health issues? For example, fancy rats may have respiratory infections or even develop a tumor. On cats, there's a high chance that they're gonna have problems with kidneys. For pigeons though, there's really nothing that I can think of, to be honest. With the proper nutrition, healthy lifestyle, and the proper care, your pigeon is going to be your loyal companion for 15 plus years, which means there is a lower chance that you will need to think about the next home for it when you will no longer be around. Which is pretty much the case with the majority of parrots. They live crazy amount of years. Not all of them, but most of them. Or on the extreme opposite, you're not gonna be crying your eyes out every two years because your pet fencer had died. I mean, that's they live literally like two to three years. Three years you were lucky, but normally, you know, two years or even less than that. So, pigeons are awesome. I said it. I hope that my video is going to help you to make a right decision and really see if pigeon is the right animal for you. I would like to end this video with an advice. Don't be like, I have crazy busy schedule, I like work till 9 p.m. and every free time I go hang out with my buddies, but once I get the bird, I'll change. 99% chance it's not gonna happen. What I mean is, don't force any pet to fit your lifestyle. Be honest with yourself. Get someone that you won't need to change for. Someone that you will feel comfortable with and will be a nice addition to your life. This way, your pet will never be a hassle, but will always be a joy.